Welcome to Varmblog, and this is another edition of Nailing It Down. Now, I am continuing my introduction to cybernetics through the viable systems model uh, from Stanford Beer. I started actually backwards, and I did this on purpose. We talked about System 5, which is kind of the mission and brain of the system. It is where the system decides what it's going to do and how it's going to generally lay out its guidelines for principles for how it's going to do it. I mentioned that System 5 was the teleological direction, but it's also the orientation of leadership within an organization. Now, System 5 can be democratically oriented or non-democratically oriented. It doesn't really matter as far as the system is concerned. Um, if System 5 is not super responsive to all other systems and it's not highly democratic, then it's unlikely to, to operate. But this brings us to the horizontal systems are what we might call Systems 3 and 4. But System 3 is a little confusing because it's broken down into two parts, auditing and coherence, all right? Now, system four has two key tasks for creating strategy. System four is a strategic orientation of a system. It is what scans the environment for inputs. So for example, if your goal is to run a restaurant and you need to get the pasta at the cheapest rate, you find the best wholesale pasta to buy it from that requires you to know the landmark of pasta retail. All right. Sis but it also plans for the future using its observations from various forms of system three, or what we might call the administrative systems. The administrative systems really has to be broken down into two systems, which is a little confusing. Um, because there's kind of six layers to a five system process. No one said the beer was always the most elegant in his designs, or maybe he was too elegant here. Now, this involves both people and ideas. So in a self-regulating system, say the system of sociology, the strategy is where the research program and methods and methodologies really comes out. It's also where the sociological departments actually run themselves within the context of the university. So they're in multiple systems. Okay. So you can have a system where system four is an informal process. It can be just a kind of principal outline of things to do. System four is where bureaucracy and administration tends to come from too. Because it is management that plans for the future. Now, the vertical alignment systems are where administrative bloat can happen if you aren't careful. And where bureaucratization and oligarchy develops because it's the area in which skills capture and strategic alignment really happens. These vertical systems are what makes sure that the actual functioning of all the subsystems aligns with the ethos, the system five goals. If system five is the orientation and overall nervous system, system four is the actual neurotransmissions and the brain. In a political program, System 4 is both the constitution of your organization and the political program which unites it. And this is also dipping back into the System 3. I'll get into that. Now, System 3 is the interface between the vertical and horizontal systems. System 3 has one, one main function, and that is coherence. The system three is the immediate administrative or tactical alignment, right? Do all the actions in system one 
which is where we actually do stuff, and all the individuals in system one actually cohere. Could they be more efficient? Could they be less brittle or more adaptable? And is the system working as a group? Or is it working as isolated individuals that can't cohere? The system three can't build coherence and actual structuring of the internal environment, the system will fail. System three is also where a lot of cascade failure happens. But there's also another function of system three, kind of sub-function, which is the auditing function. In educational and management talk, we talk about this as fidelity to policy. So it's fidelity to the strategy developed by system four and the mission by system five. do we actually hold ourselves to the political and research program norms? Now, this is where most administration actually happens at this level of the system. This is where fidelity checks come. This is where you have to have interventions. This is also a place for the justification of the accumulation of bureaucracy, which can make a system overly complex and break down. But without it, without the system three, you don't have a system. It can't self-regulate. It is just either an aggregate or it's nothing at all. You need this. Now, how you structure this is the difference between a highly coordinated, effective system versus a very top-down and brittle system, etc. This is where the coordination happens. This is where skill capture can happen. This is where oligarchies can develop and undermine both System 5 and people wanting to participate in Systems 1 and 2, which are horizontally aligned, and we'll get to that in another video. If a system... If a, say, a, a system of knowledge, let's take economics, can't have a research paradigm or has several competing ones, it effectively has different system threes and fours within itself. It's not one system, right? These are often where the ideologies come into play because they justify the ethos. They're also part of the intellectual production of system four. Now, the reason why I hate talking with these system numbers is they're confusing, and this is why. But think of it this way. Once you sign a mission, you develop a strategy to implement and maintain that mission. This is where you can either systematize things or bureaucratize things. Bureaucratizing things is going to probably lead to skills capture, to arbitrary hierarchies, etc. But this is where that happens. System four wishes to change the environment, both internal to itself and external to itself, so the system can meet its goals. System three makes sure that there is a system operating in the first place. It's where the strategy is maintained on the ground. Do people actually hold to the norms of the organization? Now, sometimes this is a formal system. System three can be a policing system in a state, for example. Or it can be an informal series of norms. All the social functioning and social trust between a group that doesn't really have hierarchies is actually dependent on these norms being mutually enforced. So everyone plays a role in system three. We're all auditing each other all the time at this point. But at either way, you have that auditing function and that attempt to maintain a coherence towards the mission and towards the strategy which the mission generates. So the ethos of the system generates the strategic orientation. The strategic orientation is where unity comes in. That's manifested in coherence in system three. It's where strategy and long-term goals come in. It's how you both take in, understand, and adjust your environment. And then system three, make sure we actually do those things, can maintain those things, and hold ourselves accountable to those things. Now, lastly, that I'll give us to system two, which is about coordination, which is generally horizontal, and system one, which is what you actually do. And then we'll get into recursion. Let me show you how this kind of looks. 
I would like to thank Kyle Thompson of General Intellect Unit and Viable Systems Research Unit to for this. But this is originally from Stanford Beers designing uh, the system. Right now, I'm going to get in a little closer. This is a little complicated to see. But if you think of it like an ecology, then you move to the flow chart. All right. And you can think of the flow chart as kind of like the way engineering affects the environment. System five. This is how you create homeostasis in an ecology. This is also what we're trying to do. System four, self-reference simulation and planning. We check ourselves, we check our environment, we modify our environment the best we can, and we plan for things. System three, self-organization and automatic regulation. And we'll get down to systems one and two because they kind of happen horizontally. These are vertically aligned, as you can see, even in this model here. And remember, systems can be collectives of people, or they can be knowledges of inquiry and informal norms, or they can be a state. These are all systems, and systems are embedded within other systems doing similar things. If you want something to function, you need to understand how all these works. If you want them to be, say, your goal is a classless society, you have to look at how to make these systems accountable, non-arbitrary, and not interested in protecting the elite within a system. How responsive is your system three and four to inputs from system one and two? But you can also tell that most of what we consider politics happens on the strategic level. And most of what we consider operational norms happens on the strategic level, which is in both strategy and planning and then self-regulation inside and out. Thank you. And I hope this helps you get a grasp of how viable systems work. Once you get these systems, and I admit system three is the most confusing because it really should be broken into two more systems in most people's point of view, but because auditing and coherence aren't really the same thing. Um, but we can see how these are feedback loops that are nested within each other in both a horizontal and vertical chain. And we can see that even systems that are not democratic tend to work this way. And democratic systems will work this way too. And we can see these also as points of breakage. If you can't maintain a system three, you don't have coherence, you're not really uh, a viable system. If you don't have system four and you can't plan and deal or take in knowledge from your environment, let's say you drink your own Kool-Aid too much, you're not going to remain a viable system. A lot of how things remain viable happens at this level. And it's based off the idea that policy, our orientation, our principles dominate the ethos or the organization. So principles do matter. Ideology, for example, can be seen as part of systems four and three maintaining themselves. Not part of the actual orientation of the organization. So ideology is a way to build consensus and get cohesion. It's, you know, it has nothing to do with truth or falsity. I hope this helps you understand these systems. Now, these apply mostly to human systems, but Beer actually uses this to do, you know, these system feedback loops is a good part of how computer programming protocols work. So this is not just about humans. Animals and machines are also functioning at this level, which is why we have to talk about this at such an abstract level, because it's the way systems work in general. Thank you. Like and subscribe. Sign up to the Patreon if you're so inclined. And if you're not, just let, share, comment, leave a review. Uh, agree with me, disagree with me. As long as you're respectful, I pretty much take all comers. Have a great day.